coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. That your heart, your spirit, your soul that's renewed with the word, your heart is your contact point with God in the spirit realm. And it is what will inspire actions in the physical realm. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hello, welcome today, welcome to Fresh Dew. Fresh Dew is a program that's designed just for you. It's designed to build you up and to give fresh inspiration and direction for your life. I thank the host of the program, Pastor Nke Chiene, for giving me the opportunity to come to you with the word of God. My name is Pastor Shola Akinwale. And we've been examining the last no examining in the last number of episodes a message we have dubbed, What are you doing with your faith? What are you doing with your faith? Luke 8, 22 to 26 is our text now. We'll, we'll read it one more time. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is the opposite of Galilee. So what have we seen in uh, three parts? This is part four. Part four, if I didn't mention that before. So this is part four, and we've seen in the last number of episodes, uh, when we started out, we started by saying, that Jesus looked out for faith in this instance with his disciples. In this episode, when they were on the boat, crossing from one side of the lake to the other, he looked out for faith and he didn't find it. And we considered the thought that, could this be the reality with many of God's people? Could it be in the situations of their lives, God is asking this or a similar question? All right, this statement is, uh, is what Jesus meant. What the thing that God is looking for in the situation of the lives of his people is faith, all right? So what are you doing with your faith implies, number one, that you have faith. And faith we have seen is belief, it is conviction. And permit me to say it is your capacity to take God at his word. You know, it is your capacity to believe because the word faith here is a noun, so that's descriptive. Uh, that, is, that is defining what it is, all right? So as a child of God, because you believe in Jesus Christ, we've seen that, that you have faith and that your faith was given to you for use. And you have faith because, number one, we said, uh, the Bible says that we have received a measure of faith. Paul said that. Peter says we have faith of the same kind, uh, the same kind of faith as he has, as believers have and as other believers have, and more importantly, we have the faith of God. So we looked at Jesus' uh, uh, interaction with the disciple, and we looked at that question in the, in the last episode, and Jesus, when Jesus asked them, where is your faith? We said Jesus expected more. Jesus was 
echoing a principle to whom much is given, much is expected. He expected more of them on, on two grounds. Number one, they had been with him, they had heard his words. Number two is the fact that, uh, that apart from being with Jesus, Jesus gave them a specific word in that instance. Let us cross over to the other side. Not let us cross over, and as we're going, we will die. He gave them a word. So after giving them the word, something negative occurred. Somebody will say, well, then he didn't mean what he said. Oh, God gave me a word. God told me that he's going to bring me into increase. God told me that this is my year where I'll experience his abundant provision. God told me that this is the year of generosity. Oh, God told me that he's going, I'm my, I will increase in my career, career this year. And then in January, I got a letter of retrenchment. In fact, God, in fact, in fact, I didn't hear well. I need to clear, clean the wax out of my ear. Or that my prophet, pastor who gave me that word, or he or she is a false prophet. After God gave me the word, this is what happened. Listen, the enemy will always contend for the word of God. Everything God gives, the enemy will either tell you he hasn't given you or he will want to blur or blind your perception from, of the, from the reality of what God has already given to you. What you do instead is to act based on what God has said to you. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. He didn't expect to die. And that was what informed what he said. Peace be still to the sea. And there was a great calm. Okay. So that's the first thing we have seen in three episodes. The fact that you have faith. Well, let's take another point. Let's start another point now. The next thing I want us to see here is that faith is discernible. Faith is discernible. All right, look at our text. What we're doing in this series is looking at this sub, this text, this episode of Jesus with the disciple, disciples and extracting the truth, truths that will help us to put our faith into practice and to operate by it. All right, so Luke 8, verse 24. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. But he said to them, where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, who can this be? For he commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. Now, if you look at verse 25, Jesus said, where is your faith? We can both put verse 25 a bit different, uh, say differently. When Jesus said this, Jesus meant, I cannot see faith here. Why do I say so? Well, it takes one to know one. Jesus is the author and finisher of faith. Jesus is faith. I don't think it would be far-fetched to say, I mean, I mean, he's faith personified. I mean, he's faith. He's the source of faith. He's the author. He's the finisher. He's the captain of, of faith, of our faith. In that case, he discerns it. He knows it. You know, it's like people who handle original money bills. If you handle original bills of money, sufficiently, you will inevitably have been trained in recognizing a counterfeit. I remember years ago, I went somewhere. Well, let me just confess. I went to get suya. Well, it's not a sin to buy suya. I went to buy suya. <laughs> so by the malam, close to the house where I was living then, and here comes somebody else. And I was, so while he was, he had the uh, uh, pieces of meat on the, on, the, uh, on the fire, heating it to chop it off. So one person he had prepared for the other person, and the person gave him money. And the man, the man, the malam just refused to look at, to take the money. He didn't even touch it. He looked at it and looked at the person. Almost when you're giving a person, pardon my expression, a bad look. Because that was a counterfeit bill. I don't know if the person knew it or didn't know it. After he looked at the person for a while, the person put the money back in the pocket and brought a better bill, and he collected it. Well, such a man knows <laughs> that Malam recognized a counterfeit bill, even without touching it. And sincerely, I was there. I didn't know it. But because probably his course of business has caused him to come in contact with different people, he has been schooled in handling money. Now, understand that faith is a supernatural force. It is a spiritual force. But even though it's a supernatural force, it's a spiritual force, it can still be seen. Even in the natural realm, there are things that occur. You don't see behind the scenes, but you see the effect of it. For instance, if wind is blowing, I mean, <laughs> there are different manipulations of wind, of wind and the air. Winds can blow. There can be 
you know, different kinds of winds, tsunamis, you know, uh, 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 typhoons and all these kind of things that can uproot a tree. I mean, you don't literally see the wind, you can't see, but you can see the force, you can see the effect. So in a sense, that wind that is blowing, you know, you may not be able to see it, so to speak, but you can feel its effect. You can feel its effect. Another example is during the day. If it's a sunny day, of course, you know how it is, it is bright. You can see that. But, you know, the effect of it, you may not necessarily see. You enter your house, and your house is so hot. You enter your house at another time, your house is warm, your house, your house is cold. You may not necessarily, see, it's not as if a, a hot machine was brought to blow into your space, but the effect of it, when it was sh shining, you didn't see the, the sun directly on your, on your house, not necessarily, but you feel the effect. The same thing with faith. Faith can be seen, it's a spiritual force, but it is perceptible and it is perceptible to those who know the things of God, those who are perceptible and trained in the things of the Spirit. Now, when we say faith is a spiritual force, understand this. Faith begins in the heart. Let me explain some things here. Faith begins in the heart of man, in the heart of man, and contacts the spiritual realm and is regulated by spiritual forces, but is expressed in the physical realm. I'll say that again. Faith begins in the heart, contacts the spiritual realm, and is regulated with spiritual forces, but it is expressed in the physical realm. In other words, if a person believes God, the Bible tells us, notice what I said, that it begins in the heart. The scripture tells us that it is with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Romans 10, uh, verse 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved, verse 10. For with the heart, the heart, one believes unto or resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made, resulting unto or resulting in salvation. So you believe with the heart. What is your heart? Your heart, your heart is, is, is your inner man. It's part of your inner man. Your heart or your inner man can refer to your spirit and your, your spirit or your soul, or your spirit and your soul. So there are three probabilities when the Bible says heart. It's either your spirit, it's either your soul, or on some occasions, your spirit and your soul, because your heart is a composite compartment in you, which houses your spirit and your soul. Your heart is your inner man. Now, your heart that the, that, that the Bible speaks of here is not that heart that pumps blood into your chest. In fact, if a doctor opens you up, they cannot find the real you. Ah, that's why Peter says that it refers to the inner man as the hidden man of the heart. That means you can't see it. You can't see that person. It's not that part of you that pumps blood, you, you, that part of you in your chest that plums, pumps blood all around your body. No, this is the hidden man of the heart. Your senses cannot see that, but that is the real you. That is the real you that will live with God in eternity, if you've made Jesus Savior and your Lord, and if you didn't, if you've not made Him Savior and Lord of your life, you'll have the other destination. You'll have the other destination. It is that part of us that trust takes God at His word that causes us to be saved. It is that part of us that we use to express faith in God. When Jesus said, "Have faith in God" or "Have the faith of God," He was referring to us carrying that out by our our hearts, because in verse 23 it says, For whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed, cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe in his heart that those things which he says will come to pass. That is why I said faith is a spiritual force. It commences its faith transaction in the heart. With the heart you believe to be healed. With your heart you believe to be provisioned for. With your heart you believe for the favor of God. With your heart you believe... Uh, for that job, with your heart, you believe for that promotion. And you, with your heart, listen, you contact God. You contact the spiritual realm and you lay hold on the provision of God. But you see, it's not abstract. That is why oftentimes 
it will be expressed in the physical realm. There is something that will, that will be coterminous, that will be consistent with what you have believed in your heart. That thing you have believed in your heart will, thank you, Lord, will impel you, will propel you, will compel you into a corresponding action, a faith spirit-inspired action. That is why I said faith begins in the heart. Lord, I believe I'm healed. Your word says so. You, do, you, you believe that in your heart. And by that, you tap into the spiritual realm where the power of God rely, uh, resides, where the activity of God resides. We need to understand that there is another realm that exists concurrently with this physical realm. And that realm is the supernatural realm, the spiritual realm, and it is the parent realm. It is the realm that will exist. Every, that will exist after this physical realm has been destroyed, dismantled, and decimated. That is the real realm. And as a child of God, you have access to that realm. You say, how do I have access to it? Well, where does God dwell in? Now, I know God is everywhere. I, I know that. But you can't perceive God in your, with your senses. So when you are praying to a God you have not seen, see, people deny faith, yet they, yet they say things like, God, God, help me. Where is this God? Have you seen him before? The Bible says no one has seen him. He dwells in a light that nobody has seen or can ever see with your physical senses. Ah, so that means if I'm going to contact, relate with him, I must relate with him through, a diff through another means. And God has given me an organ. You see, just the same way your heart is an organ in your physical body, you have an organ in the spiritual realm. Thank you, Lord. That your heart, your spirit, your soul, that's renewed with the word, your heart, is your contact point with God in the spirit realm. And it is what will inspire actions in the physical realm. So Jesus knew the disciples were not in faith. And how did he know? For one, he saw it through their actions. And he who knew what, pardon me, he who knows what faith is knew in this situation that that wasn't faith. So faith is a spiritual force. Faith is spiritual because it is of the heart of man. It is also a spiritual force because it can be, uh, there is a spiritual realm that, back, that can be regulated by spiritual means a spiritual realm that can be regulated by spiritual means. Let me give you another example of this. And when we say spiritual means, what I'm talking about is your medium of transacting in that spiritual realm. And one of the major ways is through words. Through words. When Jesus was walking on the water to meet the disciples on another water windy situation, there were quite a number of them, like two or three in the Gospels that Jesus had with his disciples. And Jesus was walking towards them while the winds and the waves were blowing. And the disciples were in the boat. The sea was, the, the sea was tossing. The winds were tossing the boat and so forth. And the disciples, to compound issues, they saw Jesus walking. And that looked so abnormal. And they felt it was a ghost. And they, they cried out for fear. And Jesus calmed their fears. He said, no, it is I. Don't be afraid. And of course, the impetuous Peter, the one who has to speak, when nobody else is speak, speaking. The one who I call Jesus is personally assigned, Jesus' uh, self-appointed personal assistant spoke up and said, Jesus, if it is you, bid me to come, command me to come. And Jesus said, come. Say, it is I, don't, it is I, I'm the one, come. And Peter stepped out and he walked on the water. L let's look at how, it say, how Matthew records it. Matthew 14, 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Peter walked on the water on the strength of the word that Jesus spoke to him, come. That was all Jesus spoke to Peter. That was all he said. Understand, that word was not sent to the, to the water directly. That word was not sent to the waves directly. The word was sent to Peter. But the moment Peter took that word and stepped out on the strength, on the authority of that word, everything that was necessary for Peter, for the laws of nature to be suspended for Peter, 
were already present in that word. And as Peter acted on the word, he, thank you, Lord, he, 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 he caused the power of the word to have an effect on the water. Jesus didn't send the water to the word to the water. He sent it to Peter. And as Peter obeyed the word, thank you, Lord, the water obeyed Peter, or the water had to obey the word upon which Peter was riding. That's a spiritual force. So words are not just empty things. Jesus said, come. And Peter, on the strength of that, walked on the water. On the water. So faith is a spiritual force. It is regulated, I said. It commences in the spiritual realm and is regulated by spiritual forces, one of which is one of which uh, are words. And that's why God sends his words to us. He's giving us his words so that through his words, we can operate supernaturally. We can operate and function in the realm of faith. So understand that faith is discernible. It is not abstract. It is discernible or can be seen through words and actions. I've already spoken about that. Words, words that you hear, words that you speak, words that you act upon. When you trust God for anything, when you are in faith for anything, one of the key ways a person can, it, it will be obvious that you are acting in faith is by your actions. Somebody says, I'm healed, but you're tucked up in bed, you're shivering. They say, you're healed. Uh, 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 if you're healed, then there'll be an action you'll carry out. You may not necessarily go to work the next day. You may not necessarily go to, to school the next day, but there will be something that will, that will, what you have believed will inspire a line of action. If you, you will just say you're healed and you're just shivering in bed, you've not eaten for two days, you say, prepare me a meal. You don't feel like eating. It's not by your feelings. That's why it is faith. You walk by faith and not by sight. There will always be actions. Now, on the converse, if fear is in operation, you'll see it. And even in this story, you find, you find out that the disciples were afraid. If you look at Luke, Mark's account, Jesus said to them, why are you so fe fear fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Because you are not making use of their faith. Everything Jesus saw in them was not faith. How did he know? Their actions running to Jesus, shaking, shaking him. Uh, uh, master, master, we're perishing. Those words and those actions revealed that that, was not, that that was not faith. So faith is discernible, and faith is a spiritual force. It starts in your heart. There are actions that exist, and there are action, apart from actions, there are also words that you respond to because there, there, there is, there is so much power in the words that God speaks. And when you believe God's word, then you begin to see those things begin to change in your life. And it is this faith that God sees that causes circumstances and situations to change. It is this faith that God discerns that causes him to respond to you. Thank you, Father, for here. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for showing us these things. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you alive, but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others, you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide and he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud meaning it from the depth of your heart and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart 
and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly mp3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.